So, angry at the Republican government, former Civil Guard Commander General Sanjurjo decided to attempt to overthrow the government in a coup in August of 1932. Sanjurjo expected people to rise up in support, which didn't happen, and as well the anarchist CNT were opposed to this move and took up arms against his small group of rebels, quickly putting down the coup and leading to Sanjurjo's arrest. Meanwhile, other incidents of violence between different ideologies continued. In January 1933, a fight broke out between anarchists and civil guard that left 25 people dead. The right saw all of this as disorder and chaos and blamed the government for not doing more to stop the radical left who they saw as causing these problems. So in February of 1933, various right-wing groups decided to form a united party known as the Spanish Confederation of Autonomous Right-Wing Groups, or SEDA for short, which promised to defend Catholicism, institute law and order, and protect family and property rights. They were led by politician Jose Maria Gil Robles. Socialists accused this group of being fascist and wanting to take Spain in a similar direction as Italy and Germany were at that time. So by the point of the elections in 1933, Europe was changing. Mussolini had been in power in Italy for 10 years. Hitler had been in power for around 10 months and it was beginning, beginning to institute the Nazi government there. Jose Maria Gil Robles had actually visited Germany during a Nuremberg rally and returned to Spain enthusiastic in incorporating Nazi rhetoric into his campaign. He actually called on people at rallies to chant Jefe, which means boss, and is similar to Duce or Führer uh, as sort of a title for himself. He spoke of a new state that should be created in Spain that would crush the Marxist and repeal laws on religion and property. In the election, Robles used the tactics of the Nazis. Propaganda was widespread, and they used similar rhetoric as the Nazis regarding Marxism and Judaism taking over Spain. In the end, the SEDA won the elections for multiple reasons. One was the natural backlash to the leftist Republicans that had been in charge for the past two years, as happens in most governments. After a couple years, politics tend to swing back the other way. Also, women could vote for the first time in this election, and many of them actually voted for center-right candidates. Finally, the anarchists refused to vote or support the Republicans as they saw them not following through on promised reforms. So from 33 to 35, the conservatives, or the rightists, sort of run Spain. Now, although the SEDA was the largest party, there was fear of... Uh, by the new president, especially Alcala Zamora, that Gil Robles was going to be another Hitler. And so instead of giving Gil Robles the prime minister spot, he gave it to Alejandro LaRue as the radicals. His party were the second largest party in the Cortes. The SEDA and the right began systematically dismantling leftist reforms that had been put in place by the previous administration, doing away with land redistribution and enhancing employers' powers to hire and fire people. Religious legislation was repealed or never enforced, and the Catalonian movement towards independence was halted and brought back into line with the central government. Controls on the price of bread were actually removed and the price went up all the way from 25 to 70 percent in some places. The left began fearing that this was a fascist takeover and that a social revolution was needed. They thought they were witnessing what had happened in Germany with Hitler and didn't want to see the same thing happen in Spain. So in September of 1934, when the SEDA finally became angry at the fact that they were not given the prime minister spot despite having won the most votes in the election, the SEDA were put in positions of power in government, and this was the final scare for leftists as they were worried about a fascist takeover. So there began to be a, a plot to overthrow this conservative government on the left. To that end, in October of 1934, massive strikes and revolts broke out across the country led by anarchist, socialist, and communist groups. 
Most everywhere, revolts were put down easily, but in the northern mining area of Asturias, the revolt succeeded at least for a little while. For two weeks, leftist rebels in Asturias held out, armed with rifles that had been illegally smuggled in by socialist and communist party officials, as well as using their, their dynamite charges they used for mining. This local alliance of communist, socialist, and anarchists declared an independent socialist republic in Asturias and began instituting reforms as well as killing priests and industrialists. Around 40 people were murdered, mostly wealthy landowners or priests. They seized banks and factories for the people. The Minister of War for Spain ordered General Francisco Franco, former head of the academy at Saragossa and the leader of the Foreign Legion in Morocco, to suppress the rebellion. Franco's wife was from Asturias and thus he had knowledge of the terrain. Franco's battle-hardened troops of the Foreign Legion arrived just as the rebelling miners ran out of ammunition and arms. Rather than let the miners surrender, the Foreign Legion decided to prove a point and set about slaughtering all 1,000 rebels as well as any women children caught in the crossfire. The troops were part of the, the, the infamous Foreign Legion were known for doing things like slicing off ears uh, to wear around their necks as well as hands, tongues, and genitals as trophies after the fight. Rebellious miners saw their wives raped by the troops and many were imprisoned afterwards. Franco was given the nickname the Butcher of Asturias by the left after this incident and was sort of a foreshadowing of what would come later when Franco became the dictator of Spain until 1975. The failure of Asturias basically convinced the left that parliamentary politics led to better success for them. The right became convinced that violence in the army was the only way to deal with the left, and it sort of set a template for the civil war. Essentially, Asturias convinced everyone that each side was unable to compromise peacefully. And in that way, some call this the first battle of the civil war.